So, I came with the Caledonian sleeper and arrived at 8 o'clock this morning, having slept very little because it's uh, not very comfortable. So, bear with me if I waffle a bit. And uh, I put, finished putting that together while all this was going on. And that's, uh, I'm going to try to take you quickly through the 50 years that we're talking about for me and how human ecology came into my life during these 50 years through different institutions until the CHE and beyond. Uh, can I just have the first one first? Back there. Okay, so it was a journey and it, um, that's an old proverb of some description. Start with the first step in the right direction. And I've just put this because it symbolizes a lot of the work I'm doing uh, because it involves working in groups and working with different consciousness, other animal consciousness. So the horse in particular will figure very strongly. <laughs> okay, on, next. And then I just thought of what concepts, and I was reminded by seeing Alistair there as soon as I arrived, of self, soil, and soul. So I immediately thought I should structure around that. And uh, that's what we'll see in the next few slides. And then these are the concepts that I call more the outer ones that I acquired through my journey of these 50 years. And then uh, the other sets of concepts is more the ones that are being apl applied now with Genesis Agenda, which is at first an idea, was at first an idea, then several websites, then a self-employment of myself doing various different things in Sussex for the last 15 years. And now is a company since the beginning of the year, registered company uh, on a piece of land, which is what I'm gonna talk about onwards. So in the beginning, it starts with the self, and that influences everything. I, I was looking for a picture of me much younger, but I couldn't find it, so this is just me more recently. Mother, from uh, the French Empire, uh, people emigrating through poverty and war pressures, first from Brittany, Alsace, and Occitania, first to Reunion Island, and then all the way to the New Caledonia, New Hebrides in the Pacific, where there are still some family. Uh, I did not grow up with this, this woman. She left when I was three due to the opposition of uh, my father's family to her being so uh, indigenous, let's say, uh, because along these move, they acquired genes from all, all these areas, her family. And then my father's family, funnily enough, themselves refugees, but much earlier on, uh, having moved from North Africa and possibly Eastern Europe, because they're s most certainly from Jewish origins, but Marano, so they would have renounced Judaism along the way and moved up to Burgundy where uh, they met the Burgundians and that's my father's. And um, then because of the split between these two parents that happened so early on, I ended up having this stepmother who herself was uh, raised by the assistance publique, by the state as an abandoned child from an illegitimate si uh, child of a rabbi born during the Nazi era. So that was an interesting family. <laughs> Onwards. <laughs> soil. Uh, ultimately, what's my soil? It's the biosphere. It's the biosphere Earth in itself. All the more so because my father traveled halfway around the world in a merchant sailing ship to meet with my mother. <laughs> um, then, um, it's also the definition of the biosphere as the Vernadsky definition, which is the, uh, life, the biosphere is what makes the rocks and makes the geology. And these rocks in turn, through geodiversity effect, make life. And Lovelock, uh, who really realized the existence of the biosphere through noticing that other planets didn't have an atmosphere in constant disequilibrium like ours is, and so it was the the effect of the biosphere that was maintaining it, like so. And then um, my own connection with land has been to make gardens and cultivate through all these countries. I went Austra France and then Australia for 11 years, USA, Africa, and the UK, Devon and Sussex. This is Voltaire, somebody might recognize, we must cultivate our garden. <laughs> this is my philosophy onwards. And the soul. Uh, the soul, uh, I just quoted Woodsworth here, we come in trailing clouds of glory. So we come in with our own little idea about why we're coming. And then that begins to manifest and we meet teachers. And that's the teachers we meet that influences how 
and their ancestral transmissions that they, they themselves have acquired, how we grow. So here are some of the most influential ones, well, the most influential ones. Mark Nelson created the Institute of Ecotechnics, which um, I worked with for 11 years, created 12 projects in different biomes of the biosphere, and was instrumental in creating the Biosphere 2, which is a brainchild of John Allen, this uh, enlightened looking man there, <laughs> um, who was really at the heart of the creation of the Biosphere 2 and the Institute. These two men were my big teachers. Then this lady on the horse that I'm struggling to follow is Dr. Mark Kylie Worthington, who created uh, in this country the Eco Etho Agriculture movement and has, she's now 82, has created seven different farms uh, as in environment as wide, wide apart as Devon, the Isle of Mull, the Alps in, in France and Africa and etc. She's an amazing woman, so that was a big teacher. Then this man was uh, my boyfriend and my, my man for a number of years and he comes from the tradition of um, the, uh, the craft tradition of England. So he really introduced me to England and to the, um, the whole tradition of the arts and crafts. And so he was very influential. And this is my daughter. Um, and one's daughter, one's children are big teachers as well. And then we have Jerry Corbyn, everybody can recognize. <laughs> this is a political education side of things. Uh, that just gives an idea how my soul has been influenced onwards. Then guiding concepts, so I'm going back to that. The 50 year story starts <coughs> with a vision. Now the first vision I remember is when I was in the uh, area of Bordeaux. It's a, Les Landes it's called. You may have heard about it recently because of big fires that have swept through this year there. It's an area of sand dunes that have been built over the millennia by the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, in, this, in this area, entire villages disappear in the sands when the uh, pines are being removed, they harvest it regularly. And that struck me because the, the, the vision of a whole village barely emerging from the sands made me realize that there were some big forces at work here over very long periods of time. And from that, I continued um, my journey about 50 years ago, I was 13. And just at that time, there was the great droughts of the Sahel going on. And in my class, there was one man who had been born and raised there in the Sahel region. And he involved me in a big um, campaign to raise money to stop people starving in the Sahel. And that started me on that route. That led me to go to Africa eventually and to become more and more involved with that. Now, these concepts are not in any particular order, but these are the concepts that I've worked with and then the sets of concepts that I learned from ecotechnics, ecology of techniques and the techniques of ecology from eco agriculture, which is about, it's basically ecology of animals and our ecology, especially the mammals that share the farming tradition with us and their ability to learn. And so we, learning from that and building your um, work on the land from that, permaculture and wilding. So that, uh, more recent, because I now I'm in Sussex for 15 years, and I went to begin some training with the Nep Estate. So these are the great cattle of the Nep Estate, the biggest wilding experiment in UK. And the traditions of the uh, scything, which I've learned a lot from, um, we'll go back to that. Then there's, this is the biosphere too. So that was the culmination of the work of 25 years of the Institute of Ecotechnics. I'm not going to go into detail of that. You can all find out about the Biosphere 2 online, permaculture. And that was a work in Australia. I was in Australia after, say, how did it lead uh, from getting involved with Africa and the Sahel. I then was looking for what to do in my life. And I've, I first thought I would deal with justice and I wanted to do the law. And, then I was put into nursing by my father and I had to extricate myself out of that uh, to try to do what I wanted. In the process, I met some people doing theater who were also having a farm. That was the Institute of Ecotechnics. And it's through working with them that uh, they ended up offering that went to their Australian projects, which was working on semi-arid land regeneration. So we are back then to how to deal with the desertification issues and moving sands. 
that's how I went to work in 11 years in Australia and became an Australian citizen. When I left there, I didn't have this perspective anymore of being French. Uh, I knew I wanted to come here to be much more at the heart of um, the biosphere. You know, the old British Empire did span most of the Earth's biosphere, so I came here. Okay, move on, move on. I know, I'm probably not going to be able to cover everything, but I, I had prepared this for 50 minutes originally. <laughs> right, so then all of that um, resulted in me working first with Mart in Devon on one of her farms, and then to support myself and my daughter working in the NHS. This is me as a nurse here. Yeah? Uh, but that's connected because the notion of health and homeostasis, it was in my list of concepts there. Oh, there it is. Um, has always interested me how human health is, for the moment, very separated from the homeostasis state of a great ecosystem, let's say, whereas they ought to be very connected. So I've always worked on both sides, since, especially since the CHE um, Masters, which I did in 2002. Um, so I worked for half of my life with health in the NHS, and the other half with uh, all these concepts of land, providing health, so growing apples, making jams, um, echinacea, that's herbalism, direct touch healing, the understanding of the energies of the body. And the most important possibly is the creative group. Is this what's missing in a lot of organizations is how to, knowing how to create the creative group because the creative group can handle the complexity of our world onwards. And now we have created this University Agenda Enterprise, which is going to focus on this regeneration and regeneration of landscape and community on these um, sort of biomic, what I got from the biosphere too, was the notion of biomes uh, connected to each other from the equator to the poles and these great big moves that happen of water cycles, of animals, of birds in particular. And that's what I decided to create, something that could work on that scale. So this is the potential creative group. It actually already is a creative group, and I've included the animals, because they're a big part of it. <laughs> um, and we found this piece of land. I'm going to move to next, next slide. The place that we found at last through an inheritance in Sussex is 14 acres. It's on an, an old estate, Waldring Fold estate, which was about 350, 400 acres. And that was the, the size that was like sustainable for hundreds of years in England. And I'm very interested in estates because estates had the ability to sustain a whole community of people and were integrated in the fabric of the biogeology of the area. So, um, oh, we have only 14 acres. I'm already in connection with all the neighbors who all have a piece of the estate because you can still see the estate, what it was capable of when it was one whole, you know. And um, we've started, well, we, we already have a small orchard, now we're going to expand producing apples. Our neighbor does cider. We have the cattle, you've seen in the previous picture. We have work with uh, understanding horsemanship, growing vegetables. And this is a haymaking by hand workshop we did for the first time this year. And we have woodland on. And to finish with the greater picture, we like, would like the company to grow to to uh, that level, it's not there now, is, okay, this notion of Europe to Africa, the redeeming of empire, which is something I've been involved with all along um, through my origins and through my interest in desertification, and uh, I did a big journey also uh, to look at desertification in Nigeria and Niger. So I support small projects. This is a little girl, one of the projects. This is me and my teacher, Mark Kelly Willington, working with elephants. Uh, there's another project in Ghana, I couldn't find any picture, which is doing perma permaculture. And, oh, this is upside down. <laughs> um, I have a notion, what's happening in Ukraine now? I really got involved in that because I feel that there's some big movement of history happening here, all to do with that. That was my thesis with the um, CHC, where I called it the redeeming of empire. The end of age of empires is what we are into, simply because we are at the finite... Um, moment where there's no more space to be taken, but um, the uh, Russian Empire had not really understood that yet and is still trying to expand uh, in a way that is proving to be totally unacceptable to the rest of the world, and these are the countries that are supporting Ukraine in this. So I see it as a death of aggressive empires, 
also see it as about these big lines, north, south, east, west. I think they have a lot to do with regeneration potential. And I see that the west is kind of moving in and meeting with the east. Uh, so the east and the west are meeting. They started to meet in the 60s, but now they are kind of blending <laughs> a bit aggressively at the moment, but they are blending. Then um, that keeps bringing this notion of migration. It was there at the beginning of my talk when I talk about my parents migrating and their families migrating. We need an open border world eventually. We don't uh, need borders, obviously. <laughs> Information flows freely, energy flows freely, capital flows freely. Only people don't fall, uh, move freely, as we learned in new economics. That's the major problem. Uh, so there's something that we want to get involved with. And also, an, a notion that goes with that is the fact that we don't have to think about just one biosphere anymore. The Biosphere 2 experiment has shown that. And we have a perseverance on Mars. I'm absolutely flabbergasted already what this perseverance little rover has found on Mars. You know, the presence of possibly life there, very early life, or the proto-life. Um, so that whole notion has got to become very central to give future to humanity, to give a sense of purpose, to get us out of this kind of dead end feeling that we are into. So that's another thing I want to work on uh, through, the, through the work. And then in that, I think one of the big stumbling blocks we are onto is that nations are very important for cultural bi diversity, just like biodiversity is very important, cultural diversity is very important. The indigenous thing, as uh, Alistair was talking about, we must all find our indigenous inside. But at the same time, we are all planetary as well. And so we can't have nationalism it can't become more important to be Scottish than to be a human of the biosphere, a biospherian. We have to have at the same time the notion of our roots and ancestry and the notion of our future in space. Thank you.